Hello and welcome to today's video. We're joined here today with the Wave Cruiser board and we're doing an extensive review. Some of these boards we've had over 18 months now and have been out upwards of 500 times here at our paddleboard centre. So it's time to give our verdict. Are they any good or not? And should they be the board you buy? Now, there are a lot of paddle boards out there on the market and the cruiser boards do come in pretty cheap, which is what we're talking about today, to be honest. At the moment, these guys are 199 each and for an 11 foot 6 board, that really isn't bad at all. We've got the three different colours, we've got the blue, we've got the orange and the navy. The navy is my favourite by far. I just think it's smart, I think it lasts a bit better and I think it just looks I don't know, a bit more pro when you're out there on the water, especially for a cheaper board as well, like that one is. When you get them out of the box, they come with just a couple of things. You get a nice Wave branded paddle. These do last pretty well, to be honest. They're aluminium, they're not carbon, but they're pretty good. You also get the ankle leash, which goes on the back of the board. You get a fin and you get a pump as well. To be honest, we've not actually got any of the pumps left. We've bought 15 of these boards and every single pump is broken. So it says a little bit about what you're buying, but this is more about the board itself. But in terms of accessories, paddles lasted really well, fins lasted really well, ankle leashes, they always last all right. The pumps, they're a bit shit to be quite honest, but you know, upgrade your pump and you've got yourself a pretty good accessory kit. We're going to start off with the positives about these boards because there are a lot of them. I mean, these boards come in at a pretty low range price. However, I would say the quality of them is relatively mid-tier. The reason we've been talking about them today is because they're affordable, they're good quality and they're starting to pop up all over the place now. These things have even been in Selfridges this year, so they really are up and coming. We've got a trade account with Wave ourselves and a lot of other companies have too. They're really trying to expand. So they're an interesting board to be talking about. One of the best things about them is they are nice and deep. There's a lot of depth in these boards. Now, we've got a few boards at the center, but the Wave ones are our primary board. And the reason for that is the depth. That depth is about a third more than most other boards on the market. And what that does is gives you an extra bit of buoyancy while you're on the water, makes the board more stable, and means for beginners, which is who we're getting at this centre majority of the time, they're absolutely perfect. The reason we've got the 11.6 is that exact reason. An extra foot of board just makes them a little bit more stable, and it just means that people are having a better time out there on the water. Now, if you're over about 5.7, 5.8, you probably want to buy an 11.6. You're going to have a much better time on that board. If you're under that height, it's probably worth looking at a 10.6 because an 11.6 is just going to be a little bit too big for you. Well, that's in my personal opinion. However, we have kids go out on these boards and even they have a fantastic time. So if you're thinking of something that's super stable, super bomb proof, and you're not really bothered about maneuverability too much, the 11.6 is going to be perfect for anyone from this height all the way up to, to my height, 6.2 and plus as well. One of the other things we can say about these wave cruising boards is that the seams on the drop stitch are absolutely flawless. Now, as I said, we've had 15 of these boards here. Some of these boards are over a year and a half old. They've been out over 500 times and the seams on them have never, ever given in. The reason I mention the seams is actually quite important because we've got, there's actually two of them over here out on our jetties. We've got a few Aquaplanet boards we've had the seams go on a bit of a manufacturer's fault. Now, because we've used them so much and hammered them, we've just repaired them, but it's not something we've experienced with the Wave, and I don't know how it compares to the paddle boards, but the way these are actually put together is pretty good. Another point of note, which again comes back to that overall quality again, is the valves on these things. The valves do not come loose. I don't know what it is about wave boards, but the valves don't come loose. As I said, we've got a few boards. We've got our Aquatech board, Aquaplanet. We've even got a blue fin board, a really big one just out there. And the, the valves are always coming loose and you have to tighten them up, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with having to tighten the valves on your paddle boards. However, we've had about five or six beginners come to the center with their own boards and they're like, oh, my valve's leaking, I don't know what to do about it, because people don't know you can tighten them up even though the tool comes with them. So just having valves that just, you know, keep the air in your board. Again, it all just hones back really to that quality that comes with these boards. I mean, 199, I think, you know, when they're full price, they're like 299 or something like that, but is in every board on the market. But, you know, that sort of quality at that price, I mean, you really can't compare, is pretty good. 
Now you must be thinking, but Reese, there must be drawbacks to having a board that's only £200, and you would be correct. There are a few things you don't get on the Wave Cruiser, which they'd be nice, and there are a couple of drawbacks to consider. Now, number one is the fact that you obviously don't get any front netting on these things at all. Um, reason for that is it's not a touring board. It's a cheap board. It's meant for cruising around, having a bit of fun. It's not for chucking your dry bags on. It's just not what the boards are meant for. So you don't get that front netting as you do with some other paddle boards. However, Wave do do a touring one which is pretty good i've not had a go but i've seen it here at the center it looks like a bit of fun so it could be worth looking into if you want to take your dry bag out on the water with you the other thing is really where a lot of cheap boards cut their costs now that is the thickness of the drop stitch material that makes up your paddle board which i don't really see too many people talk about because it's an interesting it's an interesting thing so the way most manufacturers will cut the costs of their paddleboard is by making the material that makes up the drop stitch of these paddleboards thinner than more expensive models. You're therefore using less drop stitch, it's less in shipping, it weighs less, all of that copiates to a much lower price, which is fine. However, you've got to consider what it is you're taking your board out on. Now, these boards have been punctured so many times out in this lake, it's unreal. And because of what we do, we can repair the boards, we can you know, put them back together in a matter of half an hour, it doesn't really matter. But that's because the drop stitch on wave boards is around about two to three mil. Now, some of the paddle boards that knock around the 100 range can actually be one or two millimeters, and that's really where you're getting those problems. So that's how cheaper boards are cheaper, is just thinner drop stitch when you're looking towards like the red boards the blue fin boards you can tell that the drop stitch material is thicker because the boards are twice twice the weight some of the drop stitch will be four or five mil it's going to be a lot thicker and a lot more durable so that's the biggest downfall of the wave boards is the thickness of that drop stitch and it really is something to consider because if you're taking this out on the sea you're cruising in pebbly beaches things like that it could be the sort of thing that causes you a puncture whereas a more expensive board maybe not so much so you know if you're cruising around a lake like that out there you know a few times a year these boards would be brilliant for it you're never going to get a puncture it's not going to happen it's not going to happen in the car park the material's too good for that but if you are using it a bit more rigorously like we have been doing as i said some of these boards have been out 500 times plus you could get a puncture and that is the downfall of a wave cruiser board so what's the verdict well the verdict is they're brilliant boards if you want a wave cruiser board i suggest going and buying one if you fancy going out paddle boarding and improving your skill and want something which is going to go out quite literally hundreds of times with not too many problems this is the board for you and in fact i would encourage you to spend that extra maybe 50 or 60 pounds from the lower tier boards to get to a wave cruiser board i think at that price it's absolutely phenomenal quality as i said You've always got the thing with the drop stitch. There's always those couple of little bigs and niggles and the pump's not quite as good as it could be, but it's to be expected with a lower tier price model. But the board itself, super high quality. Couldn't recommend them enough. And even the paddle it comes with, I mean, an alley paddle for that price, you know, it's just really, really good all over. So if you fancy a Wave Cruiser board, grab one. I think they're awesome. Thank you for watching the video today, guys. It's been nice to be down here and review these boards that we've used hundreds of times. Hope it's been useful, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.